Hey friends, today we are hanging out at Disney's Hollywood Studios. I hear tell that the parks have been super, super busy and the wait times have been very long. So I wanted to come out, check it out and also show you guys. And also Olaf has returned back to his regular meet and greet spot here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. And that's my sister's favorite character. So I thought it'd be really fun to come out and take a picture with them and also just hang out, eat some food and enjoy a beautiful day at Hollywood Studios. Anywho's, let's go do this. Today is Wednesday, February 9th, and it does look a little bit busy out, and it's so beautiful out too. The skies are nice and blue, nice temperature like in the 70s, 80s, and I kind of like it. It's going to be a fun evening. It being Wednesday also means there's a new episode of the Book of Boba Fett. And if you guys have been keeping up with the show, let me know what you guys think of it in the comments. It made me actually want to wear my Boba Fett Roosevelt shirt because I thought it was fitting and I can't wait to get home and actually watch the newest episode. I'll probably do that after I edit this video, but let me know what you guys think in the comments of what you think so far of the show. Just as we were making our way over to go see Olaf, it looks like we've got a little bit of a cavalcade coming through. The Incredibles there, and then, oh, look it, you have uh, Sully back there. I love Sully. He honestly was one of the best character meet and greets ever because his arms are so big and he can give you like big gigantic hugs. I really miss that. Oh, thank you, very adorable. Oh, that is awesome. And then there's Jesse and Woody. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's always awesome to start off a day with a little bit of a cavalcade. And earlier when I was telling you guys I hear tell that it's super busy today, it is. Holy moly, I just looked at the wait times and I'm kind of shocked. You know it's a busy day if three of the rides have a two hour plus wait time. That is so crazy. Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, 130 minutes. Tower of Terror, 120 minutes. Slinky Dog Dash is 140 minutes. 150 minutes, it went up. So that is so, so busy. Even Toy Story Mania is 70 minutes. This is, wow, I'm kind of like, this is gonna be a hard day to get any rides done actually. Even Olaf has a 35 minute wait just to go and do the meet and greet, but that is something I kind of want to do. So we're going to head there first, and then I think we're going to head down to Galaxy's Edge because I want to try some food from Docking Bay 7 and also just kind of get all hyped up for the new episode of the Book of Boba Fett. So the best way to do that is probably hang out here at Hollywood Studios. It is 2.01 and I checked to see if there was any like uh, lightning lanes available and there's nothing really available. If I wanted to ride Alien Swirling Saucers, the next available one is at 7.10 and all of the individual lightning lanes are completely sold out. So that's going to do probably nothing. Like <laughs> It would be pointless to actually buy this right now. I think we'll actually come back and see Olaf later on. It says a 30 minute wait, but it looks like it's much longer than a 30 minute wait right now. The frozen sing-along just let out and usually after the frozen sing-along, everybody rushes over here to actually meet Olaf because it makes sense. But uh, yeah, we'll wait in between show times for frozen sing-along and the wait time is definitely gonna be a little bit lower. As I was making my way down to Batu, I was able to grab a 250 reservation for uh, Oga's Canteen. And I was like, wow, that's pretty amazing. They used to be so hard to come by, and now I kind of see them quite often inside the app there. But still, probably the hardest reservation here at Hollywood Studios for me is always sci-fi. I can never get a reservation for sci-fi, but I'm happy we got Oga, so we're gonna be able to check that out. I miss the days of being able to just go on your phone and try to keep on checking for fast pass reservations. Now I kind of do that with the dining and I always get lucky. You guys know what I'm talking about. Back in the day when we had fast passes, I'd be in there just constantly checking to see if I get a fast pass for Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster. Now I do that for dining reservations. It's so funny. Things have changed a lot. In fact, I used to plan what park I would go to by uh, what fast pass I would get. I remember I'd wake up in the morning and see if I can get fast passes, then see what's available, and then be like, oh, hey, I got a fast pass for Flight of Passage, so it looks like we're going to Animal Kingdom today. Now I kind of just go to the park and wish for the best. So what I think I'm gonna do is we're gonna go to Docking Bay 7, get some fun food. I'm gonna get something I've never had before here. Usually I stick to the same thing, but I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. And then we're gonna go into Ogre's Canteen, grab ourselves a drink, and then get ourselves all ready for the day. I mean, I would love to ride some rides, but I, I maybe we'll see if they go down a little bit. I mean, sometimes after two o'clock, the park does get slower because people wanna park hop to other parks where they have a nighttime show. So we'll see if it actually gets a little bit better as the evening goes on. 
Look at this though, we got Chewbacca and Rey actually walking through Batu. I haven't seen that in a while. There they go. That is so awesome. <laughs> I think they're just going in and out right now. They'll come back out in a little bit, but it's always awesome to see Chewie. I mean, I love Ray too, but seeing Chewie is the best. They brought Olaf back to his meet and greet spot, so I don't know why they don't bring Chewie back to uh, the launch bay where you can actually wait in line and get a photo with him, because that would be amazing. Also, Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren was an amazing meet and greet. Sometimes he could literally get so scary and intimidating. I loved it. I loved every single moment, it. so I hope they bring those back soon. Here is a look at the menu. They've got the chicken tip yip. They've got the smoked kadu pork ribs. You know, I don't think I've ever had the pork ribs before. Pork ribs with a tangy barbecue sauce, a blueberry corn muffin, and red cabbage slaw. Wow, you know, I think I might get that. I've had a lot of this before. The Batuian beef was really, really good. And I've had the chicken tip yip before. So I think we're gonna do that. I think it's gonna be fun. And also, what is a blueberry corn muffin? That sounds interesting. I love how uh, Docking Bay 7 always incorporates like Star Wars animals into the menu, you know what I mean? So instead of just getting pork ribs, we got kadu pork ribs and that's really awesome because the kadu is actually an animal that's in the Star Wars movies and uh, I had to look it up because I was like, I wonder what they look like and once I saw it, I was like, oh I remember that and uh, now it's time to eat. They look so, so good. Here is Jar Jar Binks riding a kadu, and here is some kadu ribs. Like, isn't that so nifty? Don't they look so good? I mean, this is a very colorful like plate, and this is the blueberry corn muffin, and then they got the corn slaw there. And I'm excited to I'm excited to try these. Like I said, I haven't had these before, and I wanted to try something different because I feel like that's the best thing is coming around and experiencing all the different menu items uh, whenever you come to Docking Bay Seven. So today we're doing ribs. First, let's break into the blueberry corn muffin. And look at, oh wow, look at all those blueberries in there. Robert Dare would be proud. Like there's even amount of blueberries in all of the muffin. And this looks actually really good. I never had a blueberry corn muffin before. What a combination. So we're gonna try it first. This is good. I like this a lot, holy moly. <laughs> also to go with my meal, I got some move juice, some move juice, and they served it in a black solo cup. That's so cool. I don't think I've ever seen a black solo cup before. And if you don't know what a moof is, this is a moof uh, that you can see from Star Wars, and this is its juice. So I'm guessing you milk the juice, you milk it to get this juice. I mean, that's that's what we're drinking right there. This is real fun. I'm playing like a fun Star Wars game here. I'm gonna drink my moof juice to wash down my muffin. So a little moof muffin, a little moof muffin. <laughs> now it's time to dive into the kadu. And I don't know how these ribs are gonna work. I don't wanna lose my muffin over there. Like, are they full pieces of rib? Oh, okay, they're going this way. See, I see how this is now. That makes sense. Look at that. You got one, two, three, four, five, six bones in there. And I think you get another rack down at the bottom there. This is gonna be good, okay. Let's do it, I'm gonna pull this part right here. There we go. Now, it said that it's served with a uh, tangy barbecue sauce, so we're gonna see how it goes. There's not a lot of meat in between the ribs though. That's one thing I, I immediately noticed, so I'm just gonna take a little piece up top. And be careful, you're gonna get sticky fingers because of this. You're gonna get sticky fingers because of this. <laughs> It's definitely not like the best ribs I've ever had, but they're not bad at all. And there's there's pretty good meat. It's pretty, uh, yeah, there's pretty good meat because it's actually really large on the top side. So uh, yeah, I like it. Not too bad at all. If you're looking for like rock star ribs, these are definitely not them, but for a quick service menu item, I think it's actually really, really good. I think it costs uh, $18, $18 and you get the corn muffin and the cabbage. So, uh, not too bad for a quick service, honestly. I, I, I kind of do like them. <laughs> One thing I don't understand, though, is why do they serve the ribs with the blueberry corn muffin? Because, like, I like the blueberry corn muffin. It is really, really good. But when you end up getting some barbecue sauce on it, then you have a barbecue blueberry corn muffin. And that's just not a good combination. Like, <laughs> that doesn't taste too well at all. A barbecue blueberry corn muffin. Think about that. 
Well, that was really, really good. I love Star Wars, but I don't know like a lot of the different lore or some of the animals and stuff like that. So looking it up and finding it and showing you guys, I think it's really, really interesting. And the food was okay. Like I said, I mean, they're not the best ribs in the world, but for a quick service here at Hollywood Studios, that's not a bad deal. Now I think it's time to head over to Olga's Canteen and uh, grab ourselves a beverage. Maybe after we get out of Olga's Canteen, we'll head over to Smuggler's Run and see if we can get on the standby line. Or not standby, we'll do single rider because sometimes that's like a complete walk-on. So that'll be fun to look forward to. Today I got lucky. I'd never get to stand at the bar, but we have one little spot right here. Look at that. Since it's just a party of one, it's actually really accommodating. And this is my little area here, so we get to actually just chill out at the bar, which is really cool. I think I'm gonna start off with the Fuzzy Tauntaun because I love that drink and I love the effects that it does to your face. It makes like everything all tingly. But I also wanna get a coffee and they have a Black Spire like cold brew. And I love the coffee they used to have. They used to sell it in the morning. They don't sell that anymore. I remember coming here at like 7 a.m. when the park first opened and getting coffees that they used to light on fire. And they were phenomenal. But I think we'll get the uh, cold brew after our Fuzzy Tauntaun. Of course, this is probably one of the more popular drinks here, but let me know in the comments what's your go-to drink whenever you come to Olga's. I can't wait to try this. It looks like they gave me a little extra on top there. Kill the Spire. <laughs> oh, and DJ Rex is doing a great job up there. It's really hopping in here. Definitely the most popular bar slash lounge in Walt Disney World. I would even say it's more popular than uh, Trader Sam's. I mean, it has more room in here though, so that's, that's like the added benefit. If Trader Sam's was as big as Olga's Canteen, I bet you there'd be a lot of people in there. It'd be a good time though, can you only imagine? The tingles from the Tauntaun are really kicking in now. Like, it takes a little bit, so uh, the faster you actually drink it, the quicker it actually kicks in. And here is the Black Spire brew right here. And look at this, it comes with a whole lime, two cherries, there's cold brew inside there, there's orange juice, there's passion fruits, and falernum. And I'm excited, this is a really nifty concoction, I have to say. I feel like it's a little difficult to sip out of unless you take the lime out. I might end up spilling it all over myself, but we're gonna try it first. Like I said, I'm very curious, a little orange juice coffee mix. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of fancy, so here we go. I like that. I like that a lot. This is like very special. It tastes like really, really unique. I kind of taste the coffee and then immediately the orange juice, but this is so good. Holy moly. The strangest thing about this drink though is if you end up like kind of getting the lime juice in there because then you're adding another equation to it. Like the lime sitting on top, you don't taste it that much. But if you uh, squeeze a little lime in there, then you get a little coffee, a little orange juice, some passion fruit and lime, and then you get to eat the cherries. But this is a unique beverage experience, I have to say. I do have to say I much better prefer the coffee drink they used to sell during the daytime. Now this, like I said, it's not really a coffee drink. It's more of a juice drink, but bring me back my good old coffee. Now that is something I love. I ran into my friends, the Heathers, and thank you guys, Bright Suns. Bright Suns, woo, cheers. It makes me feel better, it makes me feel like an idiot. <laughs> one of my friends, well, one of the Heathers actually was drinking the Fuzzy Tauntaun, and it went down the, the wrong pipe, it went up the nose, and I can only imagine the tingly sensation inside the face that might have caused. She was choking up a lot, but uh, they told us it happens all the time, but she survived, she made it, so cheers. <laughs> And now we are all done with Olga's. It was so good. I love trying new drinks in there. And I think I tried all of the alcoholic beverages. So uh, now I'm trying some of the other drinks without alcohol. And it's always an experience. It's always amazing. That Black Spire brew was so like fancy. Like there were so many different flavors in there and so many different textures. I kind of really liked it. If they had another like alcoholic version of that, I would definitely get it again. And also a cool thing, if you ever want like a special like free uh, uh, like 
souvenir, ask for the coasters because they are so cool. Look at, you can get one of each one. And it's completely free, so you get some Ewoks and then the Banta. And isn't that so cool? I like it. Now let's go check on Smuggler's Run and see what the wait time is uh, for single rider. Usually sometimes single rider is very, very low, but here there's a special like separate entrance that nobody really goes to and I think we're gonna be able to walk right on. As you can see, the wait time is 50 minutes. Single rider is over on this side, so that's where we're gonna actually head to. Right down the single rider line. The only bad thing about single rider is usually you are an engineer, so you're in the back, so you never really get to become the pilot, but I have been lucky before, so you never know, fingers crossed. As you're walking in the single rider line and you come up to this point, you can see you have to continue that way, and when you first see it, that's the way you wanna go, but they are both ways. So if you go to this side, nobody really comes over on this side. They don't even know it exists, and, uh, Nobody's waiting. Look at this. We're gonna walk right on. This is so cool. I love it. And I try to point this out all the time. Not a single person. That is crazy, right? Wow. 50 minute wait and we walk right on in like 10 seconds. That is so awesome. So earlier, like I was saying, uh, when you do single rider, you're basically paired up with a whole other family, and you can't be the pilot. So the family that I'm gonna be riding with, uh, they have never rode this before, and they've seen my videos, and they were super excited, and they were asking me what to expect, and I said, don't worry, we're gonna have fun, and I'm gonna be like the biggest cheerleader ever. I'm gonna hype them up so much. Well, 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 hey. I'm going to be the best cheerleader ever. Push the planet on the left. Yep. Move your stick to fly right and left. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Gotta fix ourselves up here. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Punch it, Chewie! Boom! There we go! <laughs> Evasive action! That's the one press! Fire, fire, fire! Ah! <laughs> oh, fix, 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 gotta fix it all! Fire the harpoons! Oh, brakes, brakes, brakes! Oh! Ah! Whoa! <laughs> that could have been much worse! Oh boy! We got this! Right behind the train, yes! There we go! Alright, fire the harpoons! Boom! We got it, we got it! Come on! Fantastic! Great job! Great job, guys! Woo! That was a bumpy ride! A very bumpy ride! <laughs> I loved it! 
Oh my lord, that was amazing. I love Rowdy Smugglers Run, but I love Rowdy Smugglers Run where people haven't rode it before and being a part of like their excitement, so much fun. And I love how they match the excitement. Like the little boy, like he was so like nervous in the beginning, like he wanted to be a good pilot. I said, don't worry, we got this. And after we got done, he's like, we did good. We were a good team. And it was so amazing. Like, I don't know how anyone could ride that ride and not get like super excited and full of excitement. And like, it's so hard. I think it adds to the, like the ride itself like so much fun I love it <laughs> before we actually leave bot 2 I wanted to stop to see if they had the dark saber for purchase here but I wanted to point out something cool a lot of times I come across some amazing props from Galaxy's Edge or from bot 2 itself like this uh, gigantic uh, prop right here I can buy this right now and I know a lot of people that actually sell things like this and it's from bot 2 itself and I thought it was so cool I mean I'm not too sure what I would do with it but I think last time I checked it was selling for a thousand dollars just something like this so they must have swapped it out or had a backup and i think that's cool you know what i mean to own a piece of batu like that's pretty special i just didn't know what i would do with it i know that they've been selling the dark saber here at doc ondars but i don't know if they still have it or not like it'd be really cool to have though I've always been interested in getting the Darksaber. I don't know if I'm gonna get it today because I do wanna actually do the Build Your Own uh, Lightsaber, the Savi's Workshop, and I haven't done that yet. So I might wait, build my own lightsaber, and then get a Darksaber. But I always wanna point out the Mandalorian helmet up there. Do you see it? How cool is that? And they do have the Darksaber back there, right here next to the Legacy. So if you ever come in, this is where you gotta be. And here is the Dark Saber. It's $209, $209.99, but I like it. It's heavier than I thought it was gonna be. $209.99 though, but it's so, so cool. <laughs> Ooh, listen to that sound. Oh boy, I'm so tempted with this. <laughs> also, why we're in here and we're talking about the Book of Boba Fett, does anybody uh, recognize this right here? I love this actually though. But it's so funny because now all the stuff that's been here for a while is really coming back big time because of the show. And it's just, it's really interesting though, isn't it? That dark saber is really, really cool. And that's not new, they've had it in stock, uh, but it went out of stock and now it's back again. $209, I do wanna get it, but I wanna build my own lightsaber first. I keep on pushing that off. I had it booked actually during the time that they took away the fancy satchels or the, the fancy sleeves, but now the sleeves are back. So uh, I think I'm gonna rebook it and we're gonna do it. I think it'll be fun. And then maybe down the road, I might get myself the dark lightsaber. <laughs> Now it's time we actually leave Batu and head back out and maybe check on Olaf. I'm sure the wait time probably dropped down a lot since when we first walked in. And we can tell by the people that are standing outside waiting it. I found out that Disney's not really accurate with their posted wait times, but you can see how long a line's gonna be. Like before when we were walking in, uh, Rise of the Resistance was I think 130 minute wait, but there was people like lined up right here. Like this whole entire queue was full of people and it was 130 minute wait. Now it still says 130 minute wait and almost a whole entire front queue is gone so like that is definitely not 130 minute wait that's probably still very very high but if it was 130 with this full then that is not I am so happy we waited to see Olaf because when we first got over here it said 30 minutes and the queue was full and now it is like like 75% less than that and like it still says 30 minutes so so strange how this works but we want to get in there before the Frozen show lets out or else everyone's gonna hop over there but isn't that a little strange it still says 30 minutes but look at that the queue is almost half half is what it was before before when we were walking up I noticed that the queue had uh, almost three switchbacks and like I said it said 30 minutes now there's only one like switchback here and they have a fast pass entrance so you can book these meet and greets with a fast pass or I'm sorry a lightning lane but I feel like that would be a waste of a lightning lane Do you know what I mean I mean I understand if you want to see Olaf and it's a uh, half two but I would rather like you know slinky dog dash <laughs> Now we're almost there, and honestly, it took 10 minutes. 10 minutes prepared to, uh, compared to earlier. I just said prepared. Prepared to earlier when I bet you it was probably like 45 minutes. I love coming to meet Olaf because it smells like uh, suntan lotion in here. As soon as you walk in, you can smell it. And I thought it wasn't gonna be as like strong because of the mask, but I could smell it immediately. I'm not too sure if they have a photo pass photographer in there. I feel like they should because all of the other meet and greets have a photo pass photographer. But we'll take a seat when we get up there. 
it doesn't look like they have a photo pass photographer instead they have a box so they have one of those cameras that just take your photo which i'm not a, the biggest fan of i'd rather see a photo pass photographer do you know what i mean but they just told me that the box doesn't even work right now so there's no photo pass all you have is just a selfie if you can or they'll take a photo for you there he is hello friend how are you good good i had to come and uh see you because my sister loves you yeah my sister she loves you so i promised uh, as soon as you come back i was like i gotta go see olaf and she said that uh, she wishes she can give you a warm hug yeah well that's really awesome well thank you you are the best olaf and i love how it smells like suntan lotion in here it's so is that the bottle of suntan lotion that's the good stuff right there yeah, it smells amazing. Oh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta put it on the nose. It makes sense. Oh, well, thank you, Olaf. I hope you have a great day. Bye. <laughs> well, that was really nice to see, Olaf. I'm not the biggest fan of no photo pass photographer, though. Especially, like, I'd rather see a photo pass photographer instead of a machine in there because that's, like, another job for a cast member. But still not the biggest fan of that. But I love seeing Olaf. It was really awesome. My sister's probably gonna be super jealous. But she'll come see her soon maybe in uh march maybe march hopefully they come down if you're watching this hopefully yeah come on bon come on bon bon mom <laughs> and how about the fact as soon as we get out of there there is nobody waiting to see olaf now how crazy is that not a single person waiting we could just walk up right now mind blowing right it makes me wonder if all the other wait times actually went down today so we're gonna go find one of those wait time signs and see what they look like now like i said it always drops down in the afternoon if that's one thing i learned about hollywood studios is during the morning and afternoon super busy but when it gets into the evening wait times go down big time well it does look like a lot of things went down i mean star wars rise of the resistance is still 130 minutes uh but i noticed that slinky dog dash went down to 85 minutes and that was 140 minutes before and also uh which we call toy story midway mania was at 40 minutes smugglers run was at 40 minutes uh oh slinky dog dash at yeah, 85 minutes so like it did go down on some things but rise of the resistance still very high and the same thing with tower of terror 120 minutes for that so that seems a little strange a little high but at least some of the rides went down i mean that's not like the best wait times i would want to see i mean like i said some of them did go down even star tours now is at a 15 minutes before it was 40 minute wait for that but uh yeah i guess we're gonna keep on walking around hollywood studios and see what else presents itself to us look at that bb8 balloon <laughs> that is so awesome i love it <laughs> that is so cool how the BB-8 is kind of just hanging down on the ground like that. <laughs> I was making my way down by Star Wars Launch Bay and I noticed they have tons of the Book of Boba Fett like advertisement down here. And a lot of people are walking into Star Wars Launch Bay, but I don't think there's anything in there. Like there's nothing really in there that I can remember. Um, like they took the characters out. I mean, they have a lot of cool props and stuff like that, but uh, I don't know why so many people are going in there. And also, did they close down the studio store here or they didn't have an open it back up yet though? Isn't that so funny? That sign kind of reminds me of old NGM Studios a little bit, doesn't it? Just the way it looks. I mean, technically it could be MGM Studios and Hollywood Studios, but that reminds me of vintage MB uh, MGM right there. The funny thing about uh, Star Wars Launch Bay is it used to be a mask relief station where you'd actually be able to go in there, take your mask off, and be able to just relax a little bit. Now uh, it's kind of just like the museum itself, but you need to wear a mask. So it kind of like flip-flopped a little bit there. You know how funny that is? Because I remember we used to walk around the parks outside with a mask on, and that seems so different now. We used to have to go to designated places to actually take off our mask, and that was inside there. And it was always nice because it was uh, temperature controlled, and you got to hang out and see cool Star Wars things. But now it's just a museum, but you have to wear the mask. So times have definitely changed. <laughs> I think I'm going to actually make my way down Sunset. I kind of just like coming over here and hanging out. It's one of my favorite places in all of Walt Disney World because of the music and the ambience here. It's just really, really nice. Maybe we'll check into Tower of Terror. Oh, yeah. Well, haha, <laughs> get it, check in. <laughs> but I don't know because it is a 120 minute wait. So that could be a little bit long. 
I could sit on Sunset for hours just listening to the music and hanging out. I know I say that all the time, but it's just how I feel. Like, I love it over here. And I also noticed this gigantic pimple on the side of my face. I know you guys have probably been looking at it the whole entire day. And I don't break out that often. Uh, like, but when I do break out, it's always just one gigantic pimple. Sometimes here, sometimes here. And I have super sensitive skin, so I don't use any, like, skin cleaning products. Like, my skin is super... That's why I'm always, like, super red. Like, if you just take off and just, like, rub your fingers across my face I get so red so easily so I don't use any skincare products or anything like that but this has been standing out all day long I'm sure you guys have noticed it as well so I'm sorry got a little friend I thought about grabbing a marker and then filling it in and then I would look like I have like a, a, a mole like, would it be funny like a little mole a little moly mole you know <laughs> it looks like the wait time for Tower of Terror says a hundred minute wait and there isn't many people waiting on the outside now normally I wouldn't think that that is a hundred minute wait but I I noticed that only one elevator shaft is working today so that's probably why it's such a high weight it's taking so long to load up like if you notice that other door does not open at all so you always want to look out for that because that could slow down a ride extremely and that's probably what's happening right now that's why it's a hundred minute wait and that's why it's been like that all day so getting in line for the Tower of Terror right now is not a great idea. Even though I really want to do like ride it, but I know it's going to take such a long time. And it's always sad when half the ride is down like that because it really does have such a high impact on the wait times throughout the whole entire park. You know what I mean? Like it really does affect it big time. I say we hop into the Majestic Theater here and see if they got anything fancy in there. Maybe some new spirit jerseys. This is usually where the more unique items are that aren't like in the main like uh, merchandise location. So I always like check it out in here. Looks like they got a lot of cool new merchandise in here. Some Darkwing Duck shirts right there. And also I love this Walt Disney World shirt right here. Look at it. And then on the side it has all of the icons for the park on the sleeve. That is so, so cool. And we've got a special Powerline shirt here. How cool is that? The Standout Tour 1995. These are so awesome. $36.99 for that. And then this one is probably the same price. Not too sure about this one though. Let's see. $44.99, but that one is really cool. But I do love me some Powerline. I wish they'd make a Powerline Spirit jersey. I would buy that in a heartbeat. Also, take a look at these fancy coats here. We've got Bambi, and then we got Alice in Wonderland. And it's so sad because the coat season is over at this moment. Like now it's really nice out, but I don't know how much these are. Oh, $89.99. These are very like puffy coats though. Looks like there's a new 50th anniversary dress too. And it actually has a little 50th anniversary necklace on it. This is really, really nice. A little bit expensive probably, $168. Actually, that's not too bad compared to like the 50th anniversary lust stuff over there. Like this is really, really nice. I, I think this is a very pretty dress. But if you look over here, this stuff over here is super, super expensive. Like look at this uh, black uh, sweatshirt right here. Now, it's not anything special. It just has like the 50th logo in the corner there. I don't know if you can see it too much. Yeah, see it? I mean, it's very nice fabric, but you'll never guess how much this is. I'm gonna tell you in a second, but I want you to guess. It is $119 for that sweatshirt. That blows my mind. Isn't it insane? Oh, and $750 for those ears right there. Some of that stuff is super awesome. I do like the 50th anniversary sweatshirt. It has really, really nice uh, like fabric to it. It's not like spirit jersey. It's something completely different. But my eyes have been already gluing, or my eye have been looking at the new Epcot Harmonious spirit jersey. I, 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 as the spirit jersey goes on, I feel like it's a new soap opera here because there's always something new. But this Harmonious like Epcot spirit jersey, I need. I need. It's gonna be so hard to get this is such a bad thing to like so much and most of the time I don't wear the spirit jerseys out I just like having them I like wearing them out once or twice and keeping them because my old Epcot spirit jersey I love that spirit jersey and because I wore it so many times going to the parks it got all wrinkly and faded so now I only break them out for like special occasions and I keep the ones that I have for like for regular park days just those ones alone but I would use the harmonious one as a regular park day one so that's the one I got my eye on now that's that's the silver tuna. Will Nate ever get his harmonious Epcot spirit jersey? Tune in next week to As the Spirit Jersey Turns to find out. You know what? I don't think you guys gotta tune in to next week's episode because 
I think I'm gonna hop over to Epcot right now to go see if that jersey's available. I'm literally gonna jump over to Epcot just to see if they have this harmonious spirit jersey. I've seen pictures of it yesterday and this morning, so there might be a good chance that we might be able to get it. Now, it just came out yesterday, so things do like go by, like things like go quick. So fingers crossed, we're not gonna go over there for no reason at all. I mean, it's always good to go to Epcot though. So who can complain? All right, well go ahead, he wanted to say hi. Hi, that's so awesome, thank you. Look at this though, before we go, we gotta say hi to Mickey and Minnie up there. That's really fancy, because I haven't seen Minnie out there for a while, because you can actually go meet her over at her meet and greet spot in her nice fancy Hollywood dress. But I think she comes out here afterwards though. So it's really nice to see them up there. Usually I see Donald and Pluto, or Donald and Daisy up there. Look at how beautiful this sunset is here at Hollywood Studios. Isn't that amazing? It's so beautiful. I will always say one of my favorite things about living here in Florida is the sunsets. Look at the sunset happening right now. We've seen it as we were driving over to Epcot, but now it's like golden hour. It's so beautiful out. Isn't it just so beautiful? And then take a look at that. We're here. We made it to Epcot. There she is, our spaceship Earth. Let's hope they have the harmonious spirit jersey as our spirit jersey turns. Well, here we are, the creation shop. Oh, and would you look at that? I don't see the uh, harmonious spirit jersey, but the first thing I spot out is the castle spirit jersey. Wow, this is the one I was looking for for my sister for Christmas, but she already got it. But here it is, I knew they'd come back, $84.99. But where is that harmonious spirit jersey? We're on the hunt. There it is! They've got them! Oh boy, they've got them. Finally, look at this. And here it is. They've got it in stock. It looks like they got a lot of them. But boy, oh boy, I like it. I like it because of the Epcot logo. I mean, the back harmonious is pretty nice with Spaceship Earth there, but I like how they have the front. It's just like my Epcot Spirit jersey. The little Epcot logo there with a little sparkle to it. So this is gonna be a nice addition. There you go, no mystery today, guys. It happened, I got it. Wow, take a look at these shirts too. They have a lot of really awesome Epcot shirts in stock today. This is really, really impressive. I think they've got some more over here too. Look at this, look at this fleece throw. That's very pretty. And they also have a light coat. This is a light coat. Wow, I don't know about this though. Seems like a funky material, but it's not like my big heavy Epcot coat. I kind of like it. This is really cool. When did they come up with all this new Epcot stuff? Got a little figment over here. Oh, and this is like the first shirt that I've seen with like World Celebration, World Discovery, World Nature, World Showcase on it. I've never seen that before, but they're really, they're going all out in Epcot. And with that, we are calling it a night. I call it a successful night because we got the spirit jersey. And uh, I guess until the next time Disney drops a very cool spirit jersey, that's when the soap opera will continue. But I had to get this one. I really do love Epcot spirit jerseys. And I knew I had to get it the second I saw it. And it's not going to last long, so I was very lucky. There was a lot of them there, but still, though, I think it's definitely going to sell it within the next couple days. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.